Lin Luo's battle with the strongest opponent he had encountered so far finally began. Lu Yu, facing the newcomer, looked displeased and asked, Who are you? How dare you attack me? Lin Luo replied icily, I am the one who has come to kill you. Lu Yu, not angry but amused, said, Who gave you the courage to kill me? Lin Luo's lips curved into a subtle smile, but he didn't respond. In the next moment, Lady Kagaya appeared in front of Lu Yu, swinging her sword at him. Lu Yu let out a light shout, Divine Manifestation of the Celestial Lord, Majestic Presence of the Celestial Lord. Instantly, a majestic old man wielding a sacred artifact appeared behind him. With a slight movement of the artifact, he forced Lady Kagaya to switch to a defensive stance to barely withstand the attack. Lu Yu, with a sinister look, approached Lin Luo, Tell me, boy, who sent you to kill me? Lin Luo, looking distressed, didn't expect his opponent to be so powerful. Lu Yu, noticing the change in his expression, couldn't help but smirk mockingly, Stubborn, aren't you? Then kneel down and tell me, majestic presence of the celestial lord, all who see must kneel. With a thunderous roar, the majestic old man behind Lu Yu raised his sacred artifact again, unleashing a torrent of overwhelming power towards Lin Luo. In response, Lin Luo swiftly retreated, raising his hand and shouting, All powers, dissipate for me. Dark Emperor, shatter him. Your attack shall be unstoppable. Lu Yu's expression shifted slightly as the suppressing effect of the majestic presence of the Celestial Lord unexpectedly faltered. He found himself facing the joint assault of two SS-class substitutes at close quarters. Dark Emperor's towering figure closed in rapidly, while Lady Kagaya, wielding her long sword, also joined the attack. In this critical moment, Lu Yu chanted a spell and roared, Thunder God, aid me, Goddess of Mercy, assist me. A bolt of lightning struck down instantly, forcing Lady Kagaya to retreat. In front of Dark Emperor, a delicate jade vase miraculously appeared, blocking his iron fist. Seeing this, Lin Luo realized that his opponent would not be easily defeated and promptly ordered Dark Emperor and Lady Kagaya to withdraw. Beside Lu Yu, apart from the majestic old man, a holy female Taoist holding a treasure vase appeared. At Lin Luo's side were Dark Emperor, Lady Kagaya, and Master of Wishes, who had been silently standing behind him. Having battled for so long, Lu Yu understood that his adversary was the Dark Emperor he had been waiting for. However, he couldn't fathom why Dark Emperor would suddenly attack him. Was it because he knew of his intention to kill him, thus striking first? As a celestial master, Lu Yu was not afraid of a fight. With this thought, his expression turned fierce. He pointed towards the sky, commanding with an authoritative voice, Heavenly Lord who eliminates demons, aid me. Before his words even faded, a powerful energy descended from the heavens, dispersing the mist within a radius of 500 meters and kicking up a cloud of dust. Emerging from within this dusty haze, a gigantic figure began to rise slowly, eliciting a look of surprise in Lin Luo's eyes. Watching the newly emerged behemoth in front of him, Lin Luo hadn't even spoken when Dark Emperor and Lady Kagaya at his side simultaneously rushed forward. However, the Heavenly Lord who eliminates demons was simply too massive, casually fending off the attacks of the two. Lin Luo, witnessing this scene, couldn't help but exclaim, as expected of the leader of the future top-tier force, Celestial Master Sect. Just a summon being can so easily deflect the attacks of two SS-grade substitutes. He immediately realized that this Heavenly Lord who eliminates demons was different from the Elder behind Lu Yu, more like a projection of a summoned deity. On the other side, Lu Yu was coldly observing the trio's battle. The Dark Emperor's strength is as I expected. Although much stronger than an ordinary SS Grey talent, he is still like a mayfly shaking a tree compared to me. Lu Yu didn't want to continue entangling with them. After all, maintaining the divine projection was immensely energy consuming. It would be better to summon another divine projection to finish them off directly. Realizing this, he temporarily recalled the Heavenly Lord who eliminates demons. Seeing this, Lin Luo mocked. The Grand Celestial Master is chickening out. Lu Yu, however, responded not with anger but with a laugh. You are truly fearless in your ignorance. Even if you have been reborn, I am not afraid of you. Lin Luo's expression changed at this revelation. How does he know about my rebirth? Could there be a future seeing technique within the Taoist sects? Lin Luo immediately asked, Is this why you want to kill me? Lu Yu looked disdainful. Of course not. I just want to prove that even if you were reborn from the future, my strength is absolutely greater than all of yours. Hearing the opponent's words, Lin Luo instantly sensed the key point. The opponent said you all, implying there are not just one but several reborn born individuals. It seems a thorough investigation is necessary. As soon as he finished speaking, Liu formed another hand seal and chanted in a low voice, True Lord of the Clear Origin and Wonderful Way, aid me. With that call, a gallant young man wearing silver armor and with three eyes appeared from the void. Lin Luo was slightly shocked. Could this really be Erlang Shen, Yang Jian, from the myths? Seeing the expression on Lin Luo's face, Liu said somewhat proudly, earlier, just my heavenly lord who eliminates demons was enough to fend off your two substitutes. Let's see what you'll do now. At that moment, Lin Luo suddenly took out a handgun from his pocket. Lu Yu paused, then burst into laughter. Dark Emperor, have you lost your mind? In this era, do you really think you can defeat me with that thing? Lin Luo responded with a mysterious smile, and then aimed the handgun at his own temple. Lu Yu, 
still laughing and hardly able to catch his breath, suddenly realized that Lin Luo had turned the weapon on himself, leaving him dumbfounded. Lu Yu frowned slightly and said, You don't have to commit suicide if you can't beat me. How about you become my underling instead? Lin Luo didn't reply. Of course, he wasn't intending to commit suicide. Since the opponent had summoned four beings, he couldn't fall behind. Without any hesitation, his finger pulled the trigger. As the loud bang echoed, the bullet stopped less than a tenth of a millimeter from Lin Luo's temple, and in the next moment, time seemed to pause. Lin Luo immediately felt a surge of violent power erupting from within him. He shouted, Come forth, savior. Terrifying cerulean flames burst into flames from under his feet, and a figure, both gentlemanly and sinister, slowly emerged from the blue fire. In an elegant tone, he said, Savior at your service. Lin Luo immediately felt that this time savior was at 100% form. Lu Yu's brow slightly raised upon seeing this scene. Quite a flashy way to summon, but you actually have four substitutes. No wonder you're so arrogant. Heavenly Lord who eliminates demons, true lord of the clear origin and wonderful way, heed my command, defeat them. Both divine projections responded and charged forward. Lin Luo gestured grandly. All three of you, attack together and repel these minor foes. The three substitutes, without any hesitation, directly confronted their adversaries. Dark Emperor was the first to engage Heavenly Lord who eliminates demons, while Lady Kagaya and Savior together headed towards Yang Jian, the Erlang God. At that moment, Savior's form flickered, creating a transparent microcosm in front of Yang Jian. He arrogantly proclaimed, You go help the Iron Hunk. This three-eyed one is mine to handle. Enraged by the comment, Yang Jian retorted, It's been too long since I've descended to the mortal realm. Now, even a mere ant dares to belittle me. With a slight movement of his double-edged spear, he cleaved through the small world blocking him. As the microcosm split, a violent explosion engulfed him. Savior, with the spread of his hands, created five new transparent worlds, which began exploding one after another in the air, forcing Yang Jian back continuously. Seeing his newly summoned divine projection being suppressed, Liu called out for the goddess of mercy to intervene. A female Taoist by his side gently swung her jade bottle, and instantly, all wounds on Yang Jian were healed. Realizing this, Lin Luo's expression changed slightly. The small worlds created by Savior are consuming a lot of his energy, and now the damage caused by their explosions has been healed in an instant. Continuing like this will only waste his energy. It seems I have to use my trump card. He immediately recalled the three substitutes. Lady Kagaya and Dark Emperor swiftly retreated from the battle to his side, while Savior, a bit reluctantly, glanced at Yang Jian before returning to Lin Luo. Seeing this, Liu Yu scoffed coldly, not daring to fight anymore. Then it's my turn. Everyone, attack together and crush them. Lin Luo, understanding the gravity of the situation and that Liu Yu was finally getting serious, reflected, up to now, the battle has largely followed what's recorded in the future diary. The dignified elder behind Liu Yu is his real substitute, while the other three are merely divine projections. To catch the thief, first catch the king. He clenched his hand and declared, let me show you my strongest power. Dark Emperor, Lady Kagaya, Savior, Merch, combine into the strongest, unified form. Dark Emperor and Savior exchanged glances, transforming into beams of light that simultaneously enveloped Lady Kagaya. As the light dissipated, the composite form of Lady Kagaya appeared before everyone. She was adorned with a crimson horned helmet, draped in pitch black armor, and wielding a red and black longsword. Black flames swirled around her like mist. With a slight movement, her figure instantly appeared appeared before the enemy, her piercing gaze fearlessly meeting the four figures before her. The dignified elder's treasured whisk was swept towards her, but was instantly sliced into segments by her sword. Even the heavenly lord who eliminates demons and Yang Jian found themselves being pushed back by her alone. At this point, no one could stand against the composite form of Lady Kagaya. Seeing this, Lu Yu's pupils contracted. He sneered, Is this your strongest form, Dark Emperor? I, Lu Yu, acknowledge your worthiness to challenge me, but the centuries-old heritage of my celestial master lineage is not something a petty figure like you can easily overcome. Liu took out an ancient-looking brass-colored token from his embrace. It was the Celestial Master token that had been passed down for hundreds of years within the Celestial Master sect. He reverently pressed the Celestial Master token against his forehead. As a powerful intention was injected, countless scenes appeared before his eyes like a revolving lantern. On January 11, 1821, the 56th generation Celestial Master, Zhang Daolin, single-handedly suppressed the malevolent Gui Che, rescuing the local people from dire straits. On July 7, 1937, amidst world turmoil, the 61st generation celestial master, Zhang Fuji, resolutely left seclusion, contributing his modest strength to the great cause of saving all living beings. On August 15, 1993, the 64th generation celestial master, Lu Nianqing, proclaimed that in 30 years, the world would welcome an unprecedented new era. On November 12, 2025, the 65th generation celestial master, Lu Jiwei, passed the celestial master token to Lu Yu, and instructing him to take it and leave the mountain to create an era belonging to the Celestial Master sect. Liu suddenly opened his eyes
lies and stated word by word. I, Lu Yu, the 66th generation celestial master, call upon the ancestors to manifest and assist me to elevate the prestige of our celestial master sect. As his words faded, figures of varying heights, ages, and solemnity rapidly appeared behind him. Each was dressed in Taoist robes, expressionless, yet each radiated an invisible majesty. Lin Luo, observing from a distance, counted a total of 12. Each one's energy rivaled an S-grade substitute, with some even reaching SS-grade levels. As the Taoist figures joined the fray, the pressure on Lady Kagaya surged. Three of them began forming Taoist hand seals, instantly binding Lady Kagaya with golden chains that suppressed her in the void. Her black flames dimmed as she struggled against the restraints. Lu Yu, seeing the situation well in hand, relaxed and addressed Lin Luo from his superior position. Dark Emperor, you've lost. However, as a celestial master who keeps his word, you can become my subordinate. Lu Yu planned to subdue Dark Emperor and then seek out Yutaijia, believing that bringing together two individuals reborn from the future under his command would mark the true rise of the Celestial Master sect. Lin Luo, looking at the triumphant Lu Yu, calmly stated, A true Celestial Master you are, Lu Yu, but unfortunately, your centuries of legacy end with me today. Lu Yu scoffed, thinking Lin Luo was merely boasting, as he had encountered many blustering foes before. He casually invited Lin Luo to show whatever capabilities he had left. Fully confident in his victory, Lin Luo didn't retort, but instead brought out his SS grade substitute, fetal movement, and activated the SS grade talent, emotion igniter. As the talent was activated, Lin Luo's spirit extended infinitely, sensing the emotions of all beings within Hang City. The city's pervasive feelings of confusion, helplessness, fear, and despair were joined by nascent emotions of hope and resilience spreading like wildfire across the city. Unbeknownst to Lin Luo, a reporter named Yao Mushi had just broadcasted a video of the Dark Emperor defeating the Wormhole Guardian, inspiring belief that the monsters could be overcome. Simultaneously, soldiers were rallying citizens with spirited speeches, and cheers of unity and defiance echoed throughout Hang City. Though Lin Luo couldn't see these individual acts of courage and defiance, their collective cheers and the outpouring of desire for life and hope for the future resonated clearly in his ears. Stirred by this wave of collective will, Lin Luo's eyes sparkled momentarily. He softly chanted, My new substitute, I have decided, you shall be born from the millions of hopes and prayers of the city. The energy level contained in the pink little flesh ball began to rapidly climb, reaching the limit of SS level in just a breath. Infinite light began radiating gently in all directions from the pink flesh ball. The ball quickly grew in size, and then a pair of snowy white wings stretched out from it, finally transforming into a slender and graceful figure. Countless feathers of light began to flutter down from the sky. A beautiful girl with delicate features, dressed in a loose white robe, quietly floated in the void, resembling an angel descended to the mortal realm. She turned back and gave Lin Luo a gentle smile. Respected host, I was born from the hopes of millions of ordinary people to help you clear all obstacles. Lin Luo responded with a smile and quickly started to check her attributes. Named Angel of Hope, she possessed three exclusive skills. The first, Everlasting Life, consumes the power of hope to allow a substitute to use abilities without depleting energy or to allow the host to use skills without consuming mana. Moreover, the blessed target can consume additional energy to obtain 20% more power beyond the limit. The second, Grace of Hope, bestows mortals with feathers of hope, which they can consume to obtain a portion of the power to realize their hopes. Those who receive feathers of hope can communicate with Angel of Hope through prayer and borrow a portion of her power. The third, Blossom of Hope, consumes the power of hope to grant a creature the power to fulfill its own heart's desire for a short time. Upon seeing Lin Luo summon another powerful SS-level substitute, Liu Yu frowned slightly and sternly said, What's the use of summoning so many support-type substitutes? I urge the ancestors to take action and rid us of demons and protect the path. Lin Luo smiled slightly in response, Liu Yu, how can the efforts of a few generations of your family compete with the hope of the countless souls in Hang City? With a single flap of her wings, Angel of Hope released concentric circles of silver halos, enveloping Lady Kagaya in a vast power of hope. In that moment, Lady Kagaya's power exceeded its limit. She instantly broke free from the golden chains, and with a stomp, she created a thunderous sonic boom, like lightning cleaving through the void. She charged towards Lu Yu in an instant. Before Lu Yu could speak, the goddess of mercy and a dignified elder by his side had already made their move to intercept her. An oppressive force turned into an energy vortex attacking Lady Kagaya, who, taking no chances, immediately released her black flame barrier. However, the opposing force was too strong, and after several impacts, the barrier was full of cracks. The next moment, the black flame barrier shattered, and the area was suddenly filled with flying dust stirred up by the energy. Lu Yu was about to gloat over his apparent victory but was shocked to find that Lady Kagaya had vanished along with the dust. Suddenly, a cold voice came from behind him. Are you looking for me? Lady Kagaya's sudden appearance left Lu Yu with no time to react, but the goddess of mercy, who had always been protective of him, reacted very quickly. With a gentle shake of her 
jade bottle. Infinite streams of water surrounded Lu Yu. Several rogue elders also hurriedly gathered around. After Lady Kagaya waved her long sword to repel the people, her figure mysteriously disappeared again. When she reappeared, she had already bypassed the many rogue elders and was not far from Lu Yu, with only two elders left guarding him. At this moment, Lin Luo's voice also rose. Your blade shall be invincible. Your blade shall shatter all. I bestow upon you the power to defeat the enemies before you, the power to exceed your own limits. As Lin Luo murmured, the energy of Master of Wishes plummeted from 1,025 points to one point. A terrifying force of wish, along with the power of hope, acted upon Lady Kagaya, making her power break through the skies. Torrential black flames instantly transformed into numerous dark blades, piercing into the bodies of the two elders. As two screams rang out, the figures of the robed elders dissipated. At this moment, Liu felt an intense dread, unable to understand how this woman had suddenly become so powerful. Seeing the opponent attempting to flee, Lin Luo immediately commanded, Charming Queen, cast the pink illusion. As Liu Yu heard the command, his expression changed dramatically, a foreboding feeling surging in his heart. In the next moment, the scenery before his eyes changed instantaneously, and he completely lost consciousness. Meanwhile, Liu Yu's elder substitute was too occupied dealing with Lady Kagaya to provide any assistance. Lin Luo's face revealed a smile of triumph, knowing his opportunity had arrived. In the distance, the Goddess of Mercy continued to release streams of water trying to stop Lin Luo's approach, but was easily repelled by the tentacles of the green demon. With a swift move, Lin Luo snatched the Celestial Master token from Lu Yu's embrace. Lu Yu, relying on his firm Taoist heart, awakened from the illusion, but it was too late. From the moment the Celestial Master token changed hands, the figures of the robed elders disappeared into the air. Lin Luo, holding the Celestial Master token, mockingly said, without those old men to help, let's see what you can do now. Enraged, Lu Yu yelled at Lin Luo, despicable villain, return the Celestial Master token to me immediately. Lin Luo, composed, retorted, are you dreaming? Lady Kagaya, kill him. Lu Yu glared at him and then once again performed a hand gesture, invoking, the foremost of the four holy ones of the North Pole, Celestial General Jade True Longevity True Lord, aid me. Suddenly, the sky flashed with lightning and thunder, and a divine projection far more powerful than any before descended to the mortal realm. Lin Luo tensed, not expecting Liu to have a backup plan. However, instead of confronting Lady Kagaya, the Celestial General Jade True Longevity True Lord immediately formed a thunder seal and shouted, Dark Bright Thunder God Escape. Countless bolts of lightning rose, enveloping Liu Yu and causing Lady Kagaya's attack to miss. A voice emanated from the midst of the lightning orb in the sky. Liu Yu's voice, Keep the Celestial Master token for now. I swear I will return to kill you and avenge today's disgrace. After speaking, the lightning dissipated and no one was left in the void. Seeing this, Lin Luo immediately used the mourner's ashes to restore the energy of Master of Wishes, and then muttered softly, Locate Lu Yu's position for me immediately. In less than a second, Master of Wishes had imprinted Lu Yu's location in his mind. Lin Luo, along with Lady Kagaya, immediately pursued Lu Yu's location. By this time, Lu Yu had already landed atop a tall building, his heart filled with anger and regret. If I had fought with all my strength from the beginning, I wouldn't have lost so miserably. Now that the Celestial Master token has been taken, my strength has drastically decreased. Continuing the fight, might indeed lead to my demise. While Liu Yu was considering where to hide next, his ears twitched, detecting the sound of sonic booms from above. He quickly used two heavenly eye talismans and placed them over his eyes, allowing him to clearly see through the mist. He saw a girl engulfed in black flames approaching at an unbelievable speed. Liu Yu was instantly drenched in cold sweat, wondering how she could have located him. He hastily summoned Celestial General Jade True Longevity True Lord again, who immediately commenced the Dark Bright Thunder God Escape technique. Liu Yu turned into a bolt of lightning and shot into the sky, disappearing without a trace. Not long after, Lady Kagaya landed at the spot where Liu Yu had just been. Lin Luo couldn't help but curse softly at the speed of Liu Yu's escape and then instructed Master of Wishes to continue tracking him. Meanwhile, Liu Yu, still in the air, was puzzled. How does Lin Luo know my location? Does he have a substitute that can track targets? Having multiple substitutes that can also integrate with each other, his talent is even more terrifying than an ordinary SSS class talent. I never heard of such a person from Utaijia in his previous life. Just as Liu Yu landed, a soldier rushed over anxiously and said, Brother, are you here to help? Our second echelon's S-class awakeners are running out of energy. Can you come and assist them? Liu Yu looked towards the void king insect that the army was surrounding and immediately showed a disdainful expression. Just a mere void king insect. Just then, he heard the dreaded sonic boom sound again. His expression changed drastically, and he pushed the soldier away impatiently, saying, Don't bother me, get lost. Then, once again enveloped in lightning, Liu Yu rapidly fled the area. The soldier watched his retreating figure with a sense of helplessness. Behind him, unbeknownst to the soldier, a bug-like monster crept closer. By the time he realized, a pair of massive scythes was almost upon him. Suddenly, a red and black sword shadow flashed by, cutting the 
the insect monster in two. Lin Luo, leading Lady Kagaya, asking with a smile, Are you alright? The soldier was about to express his gratitude when he suddenly noticed several more monsters attacking from behind the young man. Lin Luo summoned his long sword, and with a few swings of whirlwind sword aura, the surrounding insect monsters were instantly slain. The soldier was completely stunned by the display of power. He had seen many S-class awakeners, but never anyone this formidable. He immediately grabbed Lin Luo and pleaded, Please, help us. The monsters here are too powerful. Firearms and machine guns can't kill them, and my comrades are suffering heavy casualties. Lin Luo responded with a gentle smile, Don't worry, now that I am here, you are safe. Leave the rest to me. The soldier wanted to warn Lin Luo about the dangers, but he was too overwhelmed by the sight of the large insect creature. The Void King insect was an old adversary for Lin Luo, and he had always believed there was only one of such a level. Now it seemed that they, like ordinary animals, had their own territories. The soldier knew the young man was powerful, but he still felt Lin Luo was being too reckless. A single mistake due to underestimating the enemy could be fatal. Lin Luo, indifferent to the soldier's concerns, stated unequivocally, have your people fall back. This place will be my battlefield now. Lin Luo rose into the air as he sent several whirlwind sword auras straight at the Void King insect's face. At that moment, the fusion time for Lady Kagaya's composite form ended, and her black flames shed from her body, transforming into Dark Emperor. Lin Luo wasn't surprised by this transformation, as the events were already foretold by the future diary. Their current task was to obliterate the Void King insect. The soldier beside him was completely flabbergasted, a realization flashing through his mind as he screamed in disbelief, Dark Emperor, you are the Dark Emperor. He quickly grabbed a walkie-talkie and shouted, Captain, we are saved. The Dark Emperor is here. It's unmistakable. It's really the Dark Emperor. His substitute and the one described by reporter Yao in the videos are exactly the same, a beautiful girl with a sword and a warrior in black armor. Lin Luo, with a casual gesture, sent countless azure sword energies piercing into the insect king's body. Dark Emperor and Lady Kagaya seized the opportunity to unleash a barrage of attacks. Soon, the Void King insect emitted a loud, earth-shattering wail. Hearing this, the surrounding insect creatures immediately abandoned their opponents and rushed towards Lin Luo. The soldiers, already exhausted from prolonged fighting, suddenly felt revitalized, as if invigorated by a surge of adrenaline. The Dark Emperor, through widespread propaganda, had become something of a national hero. Lin Luo, awaiting the approaching swarm of insect creatures, revealed a cold smile. He took out a frost white horn and, after taking a deep breath, blew into it fiercely. The long sound of the horn echoed through the sky, summoning a colossal frost giant dragon from a crack in the void. Though similar in rank to a typical S-class substitute, its massive size made it ideal for dealing with the lesser insect minions. As the frost giant dragon opened its fanged maw and roared violently, countless insect creatures were shattered by the sound and fell from the sky. Lin Luo was pleased with the effect. Defeating this king insect would grant him at least five Will of Fate single draw tickets and five Fate crystals. Just then, a chorus of rallying cries rose behind him. Dark Emperor, hold on, we are coming to help you. A large group of soldiers was charging towards his position. Lin Luo was bemused, thinking, when did I need help? Lin Luo quickly called out to stop them from approaching, telling them that the Void King insect was just a thick-skinned pest that didn't require their assistance. The soldiers stood there, stunned, as their night-long adversary was dismissed as mere trash. Lin Luo then wielded the Heart of Oblivion, and its sword energy surged. Several more fierce whirlwind sword auras swiftly depleted the Void King insect insect's last sliver of health. Congratulations, player, for defeating the wormhole guardian Void King insect. Congratulations, player, for earning five Wheel of Fate single draw tickets and five Fate crystals. Congratulations, player, for leveling up to level 29. The soldiers watched in utter astonishment at the unfolding scene, some speaking in disbelief. He really is the world's number one Dark Emperor. These bugs really are no match for him. Lin Luo waved at them and then swiftly continued chasing towards Lu Yu's location. Although he couldn't catch up, scaring him was also good. He was determined to leave Lu Yu with an unforgettable shadow today. A few soldiers, upon seeing the Dark Emperor just kill the Void King insect, turned and disappeared into the mist, their eyes brimming with moved tears, doing good without expecting a reward, truly a role model for our generation. Meanwhile, on the balcony of a villa in the neighborhood, Lu Yu, somewhat in disarray, landed with the thunder. He could no longer care about losing face. He had to seek help to survive. He kicked open the balcony door and shouted loudly, Old Yu, are you there? However, the villa was pitch dark, and only his voice voice echoed, clearly indicating no one was there. He could only take out a talisman, recording the details of his fight with Dark Emperor and adding at the end, Old you, Dark Emperor's abilities are too strange. If you want to know more about him or retrieve your lost powers, you'll have to contact me. After recording, he stuck the talisman in the most conspicuous place. At this moment, he finally calmed down a bit. He knew he couldn't keep running like this. The energy of the substitute was limited, and he had to find a way to make it impossible for the other party to track him. He immediately performed a hand seal and softly exclaimed, Flame, please, Lord of the Literature Star, descend. In
Instantly, an elder in plain robes appeared beside him, smiling at Lu Yu. He said, I am the Lord of the Literature Star, here to aid the Celestial Master. With a gentle wave of his sleeve, a mighty aura of righteousness descended from the sky, enveloping Lu Yu. Lu Yu felt a sense of relief. He knew the mark on him must have been erased. This battle had been too costly for him. The energy I gained from staying up late to grind secret realms with Yu Taijia and others the other day is down to just a few hundred points. Moreover, the Celestial Master's sex heritage treasure, the Celestial Master token, has been taken. Fortunately, the other party can't activate the token without the Celestial Master's sex secret technique. When I grow stronger, I will definitely take back the Celestial Master token and completely avenge this humiliation. After realizing these things, Liu began to check his substitute's panel. However, he found something very unsettling. His substitute, Heavenly Lord, had lost a significant 120 points of intelligence, and the skill, majestic demeanor of the Heavenly Lord had also strangely diminished to only 60% of its original power. However, with no time to ponder further, he knew he had to quickly leave this place of trouble. Meanwhile, Master of Wishes informed Lin Luo that the tracking had been removed. Lin Luo didn't show much disappointment. With the power of the future diary, whatever the other party does, he can find out a day in advance. Lin Luo made a wish to Master of Wishes. Oh, Master of Wishes, if Liu appears within 10 kilometers of any important person to me, let me be notified. With the wish made, Lin Luo felt relieved, free of worry. It's time to check the spoils. He first opened the Dark Emperor's attribute panel. He remembered that during the battle, Lady Kagaya struck the elderly substitute twice with the Blade of Invasion. He was curious about what power had been seized. The Dark Emperor's intelligence had increased by 120 points, and he had acquired a new skill, Majestic Demeanor of the Heavenly Lord, 40%. Lin Luo was surprised. This majestic demeanor of the Heavenly Lord skill is quite good, but what use is such high intelligence for a warrior like Dark Emperor? A bit disgruntled, Lin Luo closed the Dark Emperor's attribute panel and then took out the Celestial Master token. He recalled Lu Yu's method of using it and held the token to his forehead, but nothing happened, leading to some embarrassment. It seemed that this sex-specific item wasn't meant for outsiders like him. Annoyed and somewhat embarrassed, Lin Luo handed the Celestial Master token to Master of Wishes, demanding, Master of Wishes, modify this Celestial Master token so only I can use it. Master of Wishes replied with some difficulty, My great master, to modify this Celestial Master token, it will consume at least half of my energy. Upon hearing the need for energy, Lin Luo laughed heartily and immediately sprinkled a large amount of the mourner's ashes towards Master of Wishes, stating indifferently, energy is meant to be used. A problem that can be solved with energy is not a problem at all. With no further hesitation, Master of Wishes began flipping through the Book of Wishes. The Celestial Master token, transformed by the power of wishes, looked slightly different. Its color was somewhat refreshed, as if it had shed some of its historical dust. Most astonishingly, the token now had its own attribute panel. Celestial Master token, a holy grade top tier equipment. The sole user, Lin Luo, effects, permanently reduces the user's mana limit by 1,000 points, summons 10 ancestors from the Celestial Master sect to assist in battle for 10 minutes. Lin Luo was astounded. He hadn't encountered a holy grade item in three years in his past life, and here Lu Yu had been carrying such a heaven-defying treasure. But soon, he noticed something amiss. Why are there only 10 ancestors available for summoning? I clearly remember Lu Yu summoning 12. Could it be that the two slain by Lady Kagaya have completely disappeared? Lin Luo felt a pang of loss. Those two ancestors' powers were comparable to a standard S-tier substitute. But given the circumstances, there was no way to hold back. 10 S-tier or above combatants. What a gain! Next, he planned to continue gathering energy and boosting his mana limit. Once the mouse level disaster was over, he intended to head to northern Myanmar, a hunting ground ripe for his taking. At this time, Hui Tailang and Qin Fan returned to the villa and immediately noticed the talisman Lu Yu had left on the wall. After reading the recorded message, their expressions changed drastically, and they quickly called Yu Taiji. However, all were baffled. Wasn't Lu Yu claimed to be strong enough to defeat the three of us alone? To think he couldn't even overcome Dark Emperor by himself. Upon receiving the news, Yu Taiji was quite astonished. He was well aware of Lu Yu's capabilities as a top-tier SSS class talent combined with the mysterious and profound heritage of the Celestial Master sect. The fact that such a person lost to Dark Emperor was bewildering. After hanging up the phone, Yu Taijia headed to the location of the battle. Following the clues left by Lu Yu, the area still held remnants of the substitute's energy from the fight, and the ground bore many traces of the battle. He instructed the blue-clad girl beside him, King of Time, begin, conduct the time reversal of this area's scene. Upon command, King of Time initiated her power, and several large clocks appeared around her, their hands moving rapidly counter clockwise. The scenery began to subtly shift, reflecting the area's past events. This ability to rewind time wasn't an actual reversal of time, but rather a means to witness past events in a specific area. As the scene unfolded, Yutaijia suddenly called for a pause, and then he dived right into the scene.
being before him. The next moment, he appeared beside Lady Kagaya, turning his gaze toward the shadowy figure shrouded in the dense fog, recognizing the Dark Emperor. So, you are the Dark Emperor, the one who returned with me to the time before the mass awakening, he murmured. After scrutinizing Lin Luo, he frowned. I don't recognize this person, and I've never heard of such a figure in my past life. His strength has increased so tremendously in just a few days. Let me uncover your secrets. As Yu Taijia's words trailed off, the scene resumed. By the time it paused again, the battle was halfway through. Yu Taijia immediately recognized the white clock embedded in Dark Emperor's chest and exclaimed, It's indeed you. The power of King of Time has been seized by you. King of Time, who had come closer, confirmed, Master, that white clock is indeed the transformation of my second hand's power. Should we join forces with Lu Yu? Yu Taijia didn't immediately agree, but continued the time reversal, eager to understand how Dark Emperor managed to defeat Lu Yu, an SSS tier talent. After a while, Yu Taijia knelt, overwhelmed and incredulous. How is this possible? How can one person have so many substitutes? And moreover, they can merge with each other. What exactly is the awakened talent of this Dark Emperor? Continuing with his quest for answers, Yu Taijia instructed King of Time to keep the time reversal going. The King of Time warned him, long-term time reversal is too taxing on energy and your physical strength. Yu Taijia clenched his fists and firmly said, even if it uses up all the energy I've accumulated recently, I must know the secret behind Dark Emperor's strength. As time rewound, the scene rapidly reversed, even going back to before the battle between Lin Luo and Lu Yu. Yu Taijia followed the reversing Lin Luo to the moment when he had just killed Gao Qi and plundered his talent. Thus, Lin Luo's deepest secret was finally laid bare before him. Yu Taijia was slightly stunned, so, this Dark Emperor can actually plunder others' talents by killing them. This is terrifying. No wonder he has so many different talents and substitutes. But whether in this life or my past life, I've never encountered him, let alone been killed by him. How did he seize the power of King of Time? At that moment, King of Time spoke up. Do you need me to continue tracking his location? We could use delayed blasts to eliminate him while he sleeps. Yu Taijia hastily declined. This Dark Emperor is shrouded in too many mysteries. We need to observe what kind of person he is first. After all, our real enemy comes from beyond the skies. If Dark Emperor's character isn't bad, collaborating with him isn't out of the question. Meanwhile, unbeknownst to Lin Luo, his greatest secret had been uncovered by others. He had just completed another successful raid on the Tomb of Tears, this time preemptively controlling the Lich Bride to prevent any leaks, resulting in his acquisition of 30 portions of Mourner's Ashes. Following that, he revisited the refreshed Sacred Forest and obtained a significant amount of God-given Crystal Shards. Satisfied with his loot, he then asked Master of Wishes to locate the secret vault left by the prison warden Duan Qingfeng. Shortly afterward, they arrived at a villa. Lin Luo carefully instructed Master of Wishes to disable all surveillance devices before nonchalantly entering. He went straight to the basement, which turned out to be a modestly decorated study. Following the method previously mentioned by Duan Qingfeng, he explored the bookshelf until one book was pressed into it, causing the entire bookshelf to slowly rotate and reveal the entrance to a secret chamber. Though he was prepared, the sight inside the secret chamber still staggered Lin Luo. He had never imagined nearly a hundred million in cash would look so vast. Overwhelmed by the sight of the massive amount of money, Lin Luo mused that in his past and present life combined, he had never seen so much money. An ordinary person earns three to four thousand a month. It would take two thousand years of work without spending a dime to accumulate this amount. After collecting his thoughts, he immediately, without hesitation, stored all the money in his space crystal. Having dealt with this unexpected windfall, Lin Luo then directed Master of Wishes to locate the position of Wang Hengji, the second son of the Wang corporate empire. If it weren't for being preoccupied with dealing with Lu Yu, he would have sought revenge for his brother much earlier. Stealing national treasures and framing his brother for jail were crimes Lin Luo could not tolerate. Inside a building at this moment, Wang Hengji, clearly impatient, rose from the bed. A butler beside him hastily offered his clothes with respect. Wang Hengji spoke with displeasure, clean this place up. I'm going down for breakfast. Next time find more. One is simply too fragile. The butler, looking at the girl on the bed already foaming at the mouth and lifeless, couldn't help but shake his head. It was unknown how many girls had perished after the city was shrouded in fog. It seemed that his young master was extremely bored. In a splendid office, Wang Hingji was somewhat boredly eating his breakfast when suddenly the lights in the hall went out. Then, an icy voice suddenly rang out in front of the office desk. Do you enjoy playing? Then, I'll play a game with you. Startled by this sudden change, Wang Hingji stood up with a trembling voice. Who are you? How did you get in here? Lin Luo pressed his head down onto the office desk. Young Master Wang doesn't need to worry about who I am. You better listen carefully to the rules of the game I'm about to tell you, as it concerns whether you can live through today. I've released a hundred giant locusts into this room to chase you. However, I'm not so heartless. If you can run out through the back door, I'll let you go. Young Master Wang, enjoy. The next moment, the lights turned on. Wang Hingji suddenly looked bewildered, uncertain if what just happened was real or an illusion. Just then, the sound of inside 
insects flapping their wings emerged in the room. Countless giant locusts swarmed directly at him. Wang Hingji was completely panicked, running and shouting for the butler to help. Suddenly, he remembered the words of the mysterious person and quickly ran towards the back door. The moment he pushed the door open, he let out a sigh of relief. Then, the mysterious voice rang out again. Congratulations on passing the first level. Let's move on to the next one, the mist of murder. Wang Hingji suddenly looked up, his gaze fixed intently on the location within the white fog from where the voice was emanating. A hint of ferocity surged on his face as he demanded, Who exactly are you? How dare you toy with me like this? Remember your unyielding demeanor now, young Master Wang. Don't beg for mercy later. The second round of our game, Mist of Killing, is about to begin. I'll release a Xenomorph Hunter to chase after you. If you can run back through the front door to your home, then you'll be considered the winner. So now, let the game begin. Upon hearing this, Wang Hingji immediately began to curse loudly. Suddenly, a terrifying shadow, as tall as a two-story building, appeared before him. This frightened Wang Hingji into silence, and cold sweat uncontrollably began to stream down his face. His body went rigid with fear, and he turned to run, cursing Lin Luo in his heart. If I can escape this time, I must use all of Wang Corporation's resources to kill you. Just as he was about to re-enter through the front door, a large swarm of giant locusts suddenly burst out, forcibly pushing him back out. The Xenomorph Hunter caught up and its sharp limbs brutally pierced his calf, lifting him into the air. Just when Wang Hingji thought his life was over, the motion of the Xenomorph Hunter suddenly halted, and the mysterious man's voice rang in his ear again. Young Master Wang, you were quite spirited just now. Why so listless all of a sudden? Hearing this voice, Wang Hingji no longer dared to act rashly. He had a wonderful life to live and could not die here. He pleaded, Big brother, I was blind to your greatness earlier. I'll give you anything you want. Please spare me. Lin Luo's mouth curled into a slight cold smile. I still prefer your unyielding demeanor from earlier. Now, I'll ask you a few questions. If your answers satisfy me, I might spare your life. Do you remember the theft of relics from the Hang City Museum a few years back? Upon hearing this, Wang Hingji immediately recalled the incident. Such dealings with stolen relics occur often for the Wang family. But besides making an orphan take the blame, it seems we didn't offend anyone else. Wang Hingji's eyes shifted as he placed all the blame on his brother, Wang Chongji, claiming he was the instigator of the whole affair. Given his current predicament, he dared not admit to being the culprit himself. If Lin Luo were to take out his brother Wang Chongji, then he could rightfully inherit the Wang family's fortune. Upon hearing this, Lin Luo was slightly taken aback. Your brother Wang Chongji did it? Indeed, it was him. He's the eldest in our family, the one behind all the dirty work. I'm just the scapegoat. Please, don't misunderstand me, big brother. Wang Hingji's tone was so pitiable it almost seemed genuine. At the same time, he secretly activated his B-level talent, Bewitchment, hoping to deceive the man in the fog. It seemed the mysterious man in the fog actually believed his words, as the gigantic insect gradually disappeared into the mist, indicating he would be spared. However, just as Wang Hingji let down his guard, a sword energy suddenly pierced his chest. Wang Hingji fell into a pool of blood, filled with unwillingness. Lin Luo's mouth showed a trace of cold smile, a mere B-level talent trying to brainwash me. Inside a luxurious villa, Wang Chongji was smiling as he told a story to his son. Suddenly, he felt an unprecedented sense of crisis and quickly sent his son back to his room. Then, he summoned his substitute transcender. Wang Chongji had always publicly claimed his talent was only of sea level, but as a scion of a major family, concealing one's true abilities was a lesson well learned. His actual talent, an S-level called on a whim, was passive and alerted him to danger. It varied in intensity depending on the threat level. At that moment, Lin Luo pushed open the door and entered with a smile, asking, Are you Mr. Wang Chongji? Wang Chongji's expression changed upon hearing this. May I know who you are and what brings you here? Lin Luo didn't immediately answer. Instead, he casually seated himself before saying, Mr. Huang, don't be so tense. I just want to inquire about something. You are aware of the relic theft from the Hang City Museum a few years ago, right? Your brother Wang Hingji mentioned you directed him to do it. Wang Chongji looked shocked and after a moment's thought replied, I've heard of the case, but it has nothing to do with me. I'm involved in legitimate business. If my family is indeed involved, then it would have been my brother's doing. In our kind of family, it's common to deal in both legitimate and illegitimate businesses, and as the successor, I stay clear of the latter. My brother acts as the front man for such dealings. This isn't a secret. Anyone in our circles would know. It seems my brother has deceived you. Lin Luo watched him intently, seemingly convinced by his sincere gaze and the confirmation from the master of wishes at the door that Wang Chongji wasn't lying. After a long silence from Lin Luo, Wang Chongji continued more earnestly. It seems you might be a victim of that incident. I apologize on behalf of my brother. Please tell me your story. While I can't undo the hardships you faced, I hope to offer some financial compensation. The man before him was capable of sneaking into the Wang family's home silently. His strength was definitely not to be underestimated. He might be an S-class talent awakener just like himself. If he could settle this with money, that would be the best. Lin Luo didn't expect the other party to be such a good actor. If it were an ordinary victim hearing these words, they might even feel grateful. He couldn't help
help but sigh softly. Mr. Wong's attitude is indeed commendable, much stronger than your useless brother. No wonder you can become the heir to the Wong family. I originally wanted to just crush you, but since you're quite cooperative, I will give you a chance to live. Wang Chongji raised an eyebrow. He didn't expect this young man to be so arrogant. He had already been so humble, yet the other still wanted to kill him. Did he really think he was easygoing? Wang Chongji's mouth curved into a smirk. You speak big words, but you might have overestimated your strength. Lin Luo glanced at the transcender standing behind him, then summoned the Dark Emperor and said, If your substitute can last more than five seconds against my substitute, I'll give you a chance to live. Wang Chongji couldn't help but laugh upon hearing this. What if your substitute is no match for mine? I assume you're also an S-Class Awakener. Don't think you're invincible just because you have some power. Although substitute transcenders are also only S-Class, both its strength and agility are at a full 200 points. Moreover, the most terrifying thing is its skill, Future Transcendence, which allows it to foresee one second into the future, absolutely taking the initiative before the opponent's action. Wang Chongji suddenly widened his eyes as Future Transcendence activated. He was shocked to find that in a second, the Transcender would be defeated by the opponent's substitute with a punch. So, he immediately ordered the Transcender to use its super agility to kill the opponent's host first, not to clash head-on with the substitute. But unexpectedly, the next second, the Transcender was blasted back. The black shadow of a punch didn't give him any chance to react and smashed heavily onto his face. Watching the Transcender that was now completely lifeless, Wang Chongji's face was filled with disbelief. The opponent's black substitute was so fast that it left the Transcender with no chance to dodge. He hurriedly pulled out a handgun and pointed it at Lin Luo. At such a close distance, even if your substitute is formidable, it's useless. Lin Luo looked disdainfully at the dark muzzle of the gun, then calmly commanded, Master of Wishes, I wish that the gun won't fire any bullets. Upon hearing this, Wang Chongji immediately pulled the trigger, but unexpectedly, after pressing it five times, all attempts misfire. He quickly threw away the weapon and pleaded, Killing me won't benefit you at all. Name your price, I'll buy my life. Lin Luo's lips curled into a sly smile. Let's hear it. How much are you willing to pay for your life? I offer you 50 million, and wherever you need the Wang family's help in the future, I, Wang Chongji, will definitely assist you with all my might. Is the heir of the Wang Corporation only worth 50 million? A corrupt prison warden embezzles more than that, but you've given me some inspiration. I've decided to let Dark Emperor give you a quick end. Wang Chongji didn't expect the other to turn against him faster than flipping a book. He was about to say something more when Dark Emperor's iron fist already boomed into his chest. His vision darkened as he permanently lost the chance to speak again. Lin Luo looked at Wang Chongji's body and muttered, I really should build my own force. After getting rid of you, I can install a compliant puppet in the Wang family to still aid me. Lin Luo then activated his talent on Wang Chongji to plunder the skill on a whim, which provides varying degrees of warnings based on the level of danger. Lin Luo smiled in satisfaction, being able to sense danger without a cooldown time. This talent is quite nice. He then began summoning his new substitute. A warrior clad in silver armor appeared before him, named Transcender, with both strength and agility at full 200 points and the exclusive skill Future Transcendence, which allows foreseeing the next second's future. Transcender, extremely similar to the S-Class period Dark Emperor, is a high agility, high strength melee type substitute. Lin Luo was very pleased with this substitute, though he felt the skill was a bit underwhelming, only able to foresee one second into the future. Hearing Lin Luo's evaluation, Transcender clearly felt underestimated. Master, you undervalue me. My power is much greater than you imagine. That black thing behind you could win against me just because the previous master's commands were flawed. Hearing this, Dark Emperor immediately became enraged. Newcomer, do you want to have another go? Transcender naturally would not show weakness, and both substitutes were about to brawl again. Lin Luo naturally wouldn't let such a thing happen and immediately stopped them. Next, he began considering who to choose to control the Wang family as a puppet. After analysis by Master of Wishes, Lin Luo finally selected Wang Chongji's third uncle, Wang Daoqing. The line of Wang Daoqing has always been competing for power and profit with the head of the family, making him the most suitable candidate. Wang Daoqing is a businessman with a keen sense for commerce. After the era of Universal Awakening, he began to make his moves. However, with the sudden fog and monstrous insects, he planned to sell off 90% of his assets after the fog cleared, elevate his and his son's talents to S-Class, and then form several strong teams. He aimed to monopolize the resources of the dungeon secrets, whether equipment, crystals, or energy, all in his own hands. Perhaps, father and son could become local lords. At that moment, applause came from behind them, and Lin Luo walked in with a smile. Mr. Wang has grand ambitions and a far-reaching vision. Being a second-in-command is really beneath you. How about I offer you a grand opportunity? Wang Daoqing's expression tensed upon hearing Lin Luo's words. I wonder what you mean by that, young friend. I've just conveniently taken care of two heirs of the Wang family. Now, your son is the only heir left. Wang Daoqing and his son's faces changed drastically, momentarily stunned by Lin Luo's words. Lin 
Wang Luo looked at them mockingly, or do you brothers have such deep affection that you wish to avenge them? Wang Shouji was about to retort, but was stopped by his father. Wang Daoqing ordered, Wang Shouji, go and pour a cup of tea for our honored guest. Wang Shouji was slightly stunned, not quite understanding his father's intention, especially as he referred to this audacious young man as an honored guest. Without further explanation but a stern look, Wang Daoqing sent him on his way. Once his son left, Wang Daoqing managed a smile, my son is not articulate. I hope you don't take offense, young friend, but is what you just said true? Lin Luo nonchalantly waved his hand, indicating that what he truly valued was Wang Daoqing. As long as his son didn't cause any trouble and obediently listen, it was all fine. Lin Luo said with a smile, once this disaster is over, you'll receive news. But if you want to fully control the Wang family, you will undoubtedly face many obstacles. I'll help you clear these obstacles. I only have one condition, whether it's financial or other aspects, you must provide me with sufficient support. After pondering for a moment, he cautiously asked, may I be so bold as to ask, what exactly do you mean by clearing these obstacles? Lin Luo didn't immediately answer his question, but instead said somewhat playfully, Mr. Wang, although you have already anticipated the future development of the situation, you still see too superficially. The decisions you are making are not wrong, but you still underestimate the changes that the future world will undergo. Soon, this peaceful world will enter a great era of strife until the order completely collapses. I will bestow equal death to anyone who stands in my way. Wang Daoqing's expression became somewhat dazed. His awakened C-class talent, synchronization, allowed him to feel someone's emotions completely for a brief moment. He felt the firmness and confidence in the young man's heart, an unbreakable resolve. Even the long extinguished passion in his heart seemed to reignite. He slapped the table hard and exclaimed, I, Wang Daoqing, will join you in this madness. Lin Luo smiled at this. It was naturally less troublesome if the other party agreed. He was already prepared to find someone else to continue negotiations if they didn't agree. After all, if the second in command died, there was still a third in command. Just then, Wang Shouji came in with a cup of tea. Wang Daoqing quickly instructed him, go and call Li Sun, who has awakened an S-class talent from the factory. Then he hurriedly explained to Lin Luo, this matter is of great importance. I happen to have an employee who has awakened a contract type talent. It might be a good idea to have him come over as a witness. A tall young man, Li Sun, was brought in by Wang Shouji and immediately bowed and greeted his boss, Wang Daoqing, who nodded at him and then unceremoniously ordered him to summon his substitute and explain his talent to Lin Luo. Li Sun promptly summoned his substitute, which appeared as a giant light brown parchment in the void. He looked at his substitute and then introduced, my substitute is called Pact of Yesteryear. Its ability is quite simple. It establishes a contract between two parties. If one side fails to abide by the contract stipulations, once the agreed upon time comes, it will be enforced compulsorily. Lin Luo listened and didn't object. If the other party is only S-class, then I should be able to ignore this enforcement. His own substitute, Master of Wishes, claims to fulfill any wish, yet it's limited by the S-class. If a wish is too difficult, it simply collapses. Seeing no objection from Lin Luo, Wang Daoqing then instructed Li Sun to draft the contract. From today onwards, Lin Luo will help Wang Daoqing take complete control of the Wang family. Upon successful completion, the Wang family must provide Lin Luo with no more than 30% of the total assets as financial aid, as well as up to 40% of connections and other types of support. Once the content was confirmed, Wang Daoqing pressed his palm onto the contract, then turned to look at Lin Luo. Lin Luo, without any hesitation, also pressed his hand onto it. Suddenly, Lin Luo sensed an inexplicable sense of karma, but he didn't take it to heart. Even if he breached the contract, this S-class pact of yesteryear couldn't do much against him. After ensuring the contract was finalized, he left the place. Wang Shouji, with a curious expression, immediately asked his father, are we really going to cooperate with him? Wang Daoqing's expression was resolute. The man single-handedly killed two heirs of the Wang family and can move freely even during the lockdown. He is probably indeed a benefactor for us. After leaving the Wang family, Lin Luo planned to continue strengthening his capabilities by grinding energy in a mystical realm, then amassing various potions in preparation for future endeavors. He intended to establish a company and build his own gaming guild after the mouse level catastrophe had passed, learning from the recruitment methods of major powers in his past life to build his own force. The next morning, Lin Luo, while venturing into a secret realm known as the Lava Caverns, incredibly lucked out again, obtaining a diamond grade weapon, the Flame's Leap, which granted him mastery in two handed swords. After days of relentless effort, Lin Luo's level had reached 39, his basic physical attributes nearly maxed out, and proficiency in various skills reaching new heights. Beyond his two diamond grade weapons, even his least impressive gear was of gold level. However, as dungeons and secret realms for levels 40 to 60 were not yet open, Lin Luo's level and equipment temporarily hit a plateau. In the afternoon, he arrived at a secret realm called the Black and White Bears Forge. As diamond grade weapons would accompany him for a long time, they necessitated thorough fortification. Approaching the 
forge, Lin Luo couldn't help but chuckle upon seeing a player berating a black and white bear for ruining his black iron weapon. He remembered these black and white bears might look cute but were notoriously temperamental and terrifyingly strong in battle, recalling a scene from his past life where an SS ranked talent was brutally beaten by one. Sure enough, as his recollection ended, the player was kicked flying by the black and white bear. Shaking his head with a smile, Lin Luo presented a celestial master token to the black and white bear, inquiring about enhancing it. To his surprise, the black and white bear was taken aback by the sight of such a sacred item. However, enhancing sacred items required not only game currency but also a special item known as Essence of the King, an elite drop only from level 60 plus monsters, which Lin Luo couldn't procure yet. Disappointed, he put away the celestial master token and handed over his two longswords instead. The black and white bear swiftly swung its small hammer, enhancing both swords to plus 5, each gaining 50 points in attack power. Then, with a sly grin, the black and white bear commented on the pity of only enhancing such fine diamond grade weapons to plus 5. Lin Luo, caressing his swords, handed them back to the black and white bear. Enhancing equipment is guaranteed to have a 100% success rate up until plus 5. However, after reaching that point, the success rate will gradually decrease and the cost will continue to increase. This black and white bear is obviously trying to scam me out of my money. Then let me take good care of them to vent the frustration for the majority of players. At that moment, black and white bear's lips curled into a sinister smile, eagerly anticipating the sight of frustration after a failed weapon enhancement. Just then, Lin Luo calmly said, my enhancement will surely not fail. Black and white bear gave him a look as if he was an idiot, then excitedly started hammering at Flame's Leap with his small hammer. Scoffing at Lin Luo's words, the higher the enhancement level, the lower the success rate. Failure is just a matter of time. After a busy flurry, Flame's Leap successfully upgraded from plus 5 to plus 6, which annoyed Black and White Bear. He immediately took out another small hammer and started working on two swords simultaneously. To his disbelief, 30 consecutive enhancements succeeded without a single failure, an utterly unreasonable outcome. Lin Luo and Master of Wishes exchanged glances, and Lin Luo asked playfully, must have been hard on you, is the enhancement done? Black and White Bear wiped the sweat from his forehead, I've reached my limit, I can't continue enhancing. Lin Luo responded with a tinge of regret, that's too bad, thank you anyway. At that moment, a mechanical voice suddenly echoed, as a human-shaped substitute covered in mosaics perfectly recited the attributes of Flame's Leap. Lin Luo, slightly startled, knew his weapon's attributes were hidden, yet this being could read the concealed information. He coldly warned, continue exposing my weapon's attributes, and see if I don't chop you up. The mosaic-covered substitute immediately ceased its actions, twisting mechanically. Then, the mechanical voice resonated directly in Lin Luo's mind. I apologize for my rudeness. Your weapon is so astonishing that I couldn't help but recite its properties. My name is Eagle. My ability is to see through any hidden information. My substitute is called Unfathomable, capable of remote operations and sharing vision with me. I noticed your confident expression during the enhancement. I suspect your substitute might be able to improve success rates. Lin Luo's gaze sharpened. You know curiosity killed the cat, right? Eagle's voice resounded again in Lin Luo's mind. Please don't misunderstand. I'm just looking to exchange contact details for future high-quality equipment enhancements. Besides, I know many wealthy individuals and I could introduce business to you. Upon hearing this, Lin Luo immediately recalled some events from his past life, where indeed many wealthy individuals paid handsomely for equipment enhancements. Thus, he didn't reject the offer and exchanged contact information with Eagle. Meanwhile, in Hang City Military District's conference room number 6, dozens of high-ranking officials were gathered to discuss establishing a supernatural law enforcement team post-disaster. The team's primary focus would be on higher-level awakened individuals with supernatural abilities. Instantly, a proposal emerged to invite the city's hero, Dark Emperor, as the first chief of the team, which met immediate opposition. Some argued that such a critical position should be filled by someone from within the system. Others mentioned that Dark Emperor's guardian, Zhou Dongshan, who was still serving a sentence, had a tainted background, making Dark Emperor unsuitable for such a significant role. The commander, Nye Shangdong, intervened in the discussion. I have reinvestigated Zhou Dongsheng's case and found some trickery. I plan to release Zhou Dongsheng and clear his bad records after the disaster. Moreover, if the Dark Emperor is willing to join the Supernatural Management Bureau, any conditions and positions can be satisfied. Upon hearing this, the other officials' expressions changed dramatically. Such conditions are simply outrageous. Is the Dark Emperor really worth such significant attention from the nation? Nye Shandong continued, from now on, all government agencies must cooperate fully with the supernatural administration in handling supernatural cases. This is not a request, it's an order. Meanwhile, Lin Luo, unaware of the official plans to recruit him, visited his brother Zhou Dongsheng in detention, giving him a feather of hope as he was about to head to northern Myanmar. He wanted to ensure his brother's safety while he was away. The prison guards quickly reported his visit to Commander.
commander Nia Xiangdong. After visiting his brother, Lin Luo wandered the empty streets, instructing Master of Wishes to find a company that could quickly transport him to northern Myanmar. Soon, a company named Brilliant Media caught his eye. Lin Luo, with a slight smile, sent his resume to this company that was hiring. The cleverest hunter often appears as the prey, he mused. Inside an office at Brilliant Media, Mr. Xing was discussing life with his new female secretary, with whom he was extremely satisfied. She was not only competent at her job, but also helped him relax after work. The next day, Lin Luo arrived at the Brilliant Media office building following the instructions in the reply he received. He was greeted by the female secretary, Menger, who had worked overnight. Struck by Lin Luo's youthful and handsome appearance, she personally escorted him to Mr. Xing's office. Mr. Xing briefly glanced at Lin Luo's resume before offering him a job on the spot and inviting him to join a company organized overseas trip in two days. Lin Luo readily accepted as it aligned with his objectives. Two days later, dozens of employees gathered at the company building. The team leader for this team building exercise, Manager Gu, saw that everyone had arrived and promptly arranged for everyone to board the bus headed to the airport. However, confusion spread among the employees when they noticed that the tickets distributed by Manager Gu were for northern Myanmar, not the previously mentioned Singapore. Faced with the employees' confusion, Manager Gu quickly explained that due to the peak travel season, they were unable to purchase enough direct tickets and would need to transit through northern Myanmar to reach Singapore. Lin Luo didn't buy this explanation at all. He was well aware that Brilliant Media was a hotspot for luring people with high salaries to northern Myanmar to engage in telecommunication fraud.